First one we're gonna do is our 11x squared plus 2x minus nine. And I'm gonna walk through our same steps that we wrote down yesterday. So step one, step one, we're gonna multiply our outside terms. So we have a positive 11 times a negative nine is a negative 99. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to be a negative 99 and add to be a positive two. Two numbers that multiply to be a negative 99 and add to be a positive two. So this was what your uh, homework was, was practicing looking for these numbers. Remember that we started with the signs first. Signs first. So since I'm multiplying to be a negative, what signs do I want? One negative, one positive. So we're gonna put one positive and one negative. And I wanna think about which one do I want to outweigh the other. So do I, I want the bigger number attached to the positive. So the positive outweighs the negative and we get a positive two. So that's the signs. We want one positive, one negative, and the bigger number is gonna have the positive. Then we can make our list. Well, we always have one in itself. Two, oh, two doesn't work. Three, hey, three works. Four, no, five, no, six, no, seven, no, eight, no, nine. Nine works. That's our list. So since we want to know uh, what the difference is, we have one positive, one negative, uh, it's gonna be, uh, basically we're asking here, uh, which of these numbers are two apart? There we have it. So we have the nine and the 11. Remember the bigger number was the one we wanted to be positive, so it's gonna be positive 11 and negative nine are our two numbers that we want. So we have found our two numbers. Step two, we're gonna rewrite with those two numbers. So 11x squared is still 11x squared at the start. Minus nine is still minus nine at the end. But instead of the plus two x, we're gonna use these two numbers now. So instead of the plus two X, we're gonna use plus 11 X minus nine X. And that will split our expression. That will split the things into two pieces. So we have two kind of halves of the expression which we're gonna use, step three, which we're gonna use to uh, get a common factor out of each group. I always talk about numbers separate from variables. So in my first group, what number can come out of both of these terms? Well, it's an 11. And is there an X in both of these terms? Yes, there is, so I can take an X out as well. If I take a 11 out and an X out, well, I've taken the 11 out, so no more variable. I've taken an X out, but we started with X squared, so there's still an X left over. Plus, I take an 11 out of here, I take an X out of here, I'm just left with one. And remember that I should always be able to work backwards here. I should always be able to work backwards and say, well, I could distribute out this 11x again, and I would get 11x times x is 11x squared, and 11x times one is 11x. Group number two. In group number two, I'm gonna write the first sign I see. Minus is the first sign I see, so minus is the first thing I'm gonna write. And what number? Nine can come out of both of those. So we take a nine out, 
And when I take the minus nine out, remember that I take a negative out. So I'm left with X on the first term. And since I took a negative out in the second term, my sign is gonna change so that instead of a minus now we have a plus. Then I take nine divided by nine and I get one. Once again, I should be able to distribute this back out if I wanted and say negative nine times X is a negative nine X. Negative nine times a positive one would give you the negative nine. So that's our step three. And now finally, step four, we've got a matching term, a matching X plus one. It's in both terms. It needs to be matching exactly in both terms in order for this to work. Because it's a matching term, I can factor it and take it out of the whole thing. I can take an X plus one out of the whole thing. And when I do that, what I'm left with in my first group, in my red group, if I take the X plus one out, I'm left with 11x, and if I take an x plus one out of group number two, I'm left with a minus nine. So here is our final answer. That's our final factor form. Multiply your outside terms. Positive three times a negative 20 is going to be a negative 60. And I want two numbers of multiply to be a negative 60 and add to be, tell me the sign with it. What's my middle term? It's a positive seven. Add to be a positive seven. So I will let you think about, uh, I will take 60 seconds to talk about the number 60 while you try and find the numbers. Uh, interesting thing about the number 60 is that the uh, it was basically the, the number system, the number that all things were founded upon in the ancient Babylonians. They basically used 60 as their basis for counting. Because then when you divided things up, you'll notice as you're listing factors that there's a whole bunch of factors of 60. Uh, and that's a similar reason why extending that out, it's a similar reason why uh, we pick 360 to be the number of degrees around the circle. Number of degrees all the way around. That way, if we need to take our circle and split it into pieces, we are using a number, 360, that I can divide a whole lot of numbers by. In the case of 360, I can divide it by one, obviously, but then I can divide it by two, I can divide it by three, I can divide it by four, I can divide it by five, I can divide it by six, uh, I can't divide it by seven but I can divide it by eight, I can divide it by nine, I can divide it by 10, I can divide it by 12. So there's a whole bunch of, uh, that, that'll be very useful, uh, and you'll see that a little bit more when we get to circles as to uh, the usefulness of that. And just like with, uh, just like with 360, 60 also has a lot of factors. One, two, three, four, five, and six are all factors of 60. But the numbers that we want, we want the positive to outweigh the negative, and we have 12 and five. Again, we're basically asking what numbers are seven apart. So three X squared is still my first term. Minus 20 is still my last term. We're going quicker this time, so make sure we're following along. But instead of my middle term is 7x, we have a plus 12x minus 5x using our two numbers that we just found. So in our group, in our first group, what's the biggest number we can take out of both of those? Can't take a 12 out because we can't take it out of the first Number, so the largest number we can use is three. 
And is there an X in both of these? Yes, there is. So we're going to take an X out as well. So when I do that, I am left with, well, I took a three out, so no more, uh, no more coefficient, no more number. But then I take an X out, I am still have an X left over. Plus, I take an X out, no more X. Take a three out, 12 divided by three is four. Over in my second group, I'm going to write the first sign I see. So minus is the first sign I see. Minus is the first thing I'm going to write. And the number I can take out is 5. And notice I took a negative out so that my signs are going to change. So I have an X left over here. But then since I took a negative out here, I have a plus as my next sign. So that I have negative 20 by my negative 5 is a positive Four. And to make sure that we did it right, we have ding, ding. Both of those terms matching that X plus four. So we're going to take it out of the whole thing. And when I take an X plus four out of this red, out of the red group, what do we have left over? Three X. And when we take an X plus four out of my blue group, I have minus five. There we go. Questions on that problem? I went a little bit quicker that time. All right, now I'm going to go even faster on this next one, but to compensate for that, I'm giving you a two-minute head start. Uh, we're, doing, uh, we're doing this next one to 3x squared plus 20x minus 7. That's the next one we're going to do. I'm going to give you a two-minute head start to get as far as you can before I start. Multiply your outside terms. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to be 3 times negative 7 is a negative 21 and adds to B my middle term, which is positive 20. So that means I want one positive, one negative, and I want the positive to outweigh the negative. And our options are one in itself, so one and 21, and three and seven. And the ones that I want are one and 21. I want the 21 to be the positive so that it outweighs the negative. So my first term is still my first term. My last term is still my last term. But instead of my middle term, my, instead of my 20x, I'm going to write plus 21x minus 1x. So out of my first group, the number I can take out is a 3. And I have an x in both of them, so I can take an x out. When I do that, I'm left with an x here, plus 21 divided by 3 is 7, no more x. I took an x out. In my second group, minus is the first thing I see, so minus is the first thing I'm going to write. There's not a number that can come out of here, so I'm just going to write a 1 out in front, because multiplying, dividing by 1 doesn't do anything. So we have an x, but we did take a negative out. So that means this sign needs to change. So that instead of minus 7, it's going to be plus 7. Which means, ding, ding, our x plus 7 is matching in both terms. So I can take an x plus 7 out of the whole thing. And I am left over with 3x here and a minus 1. So we get x plus 7 times 3x minus 1 as our final answer. Go to where you wrote down your steps. And if you have space, uh, or uh, you can write it as a note underneath it, we now have a step 0. Before you start any of the process of factoring, 
you should look for a greatest common factor that you can take out of the whole expression. So remember, we had looked in pairs of terms and said in this pair, there's a number that can come out, in this pair, there's a number that can come out. If you start the problem and you see that there's a number that can come out of the entire thing, then you should take it out at the very start. You should divide it out of all the terms and leave that number out in front. The reason that we do that is that it makes the numbers smaller and easier to work with. And I'll show you what I mean as we do these examples. I haven't mentioned that because it hasn't happened yet, but it's about to happen on these next couple problems. And it'll happen on your homework sometimes as well. So it's something to keep an eye out for before you start the problem. Ask yourself, is most of the time it's a number, is there a number that can come out of all three of these terms? It's gotta come out of all three. Because it'll make the numbers smaller and easier to work with. Let me show you what I mean. In this first one, if I just started without looking for my GCF, I would multiply these outside terms and be looking for a number that multiplies to be a positive 216. So if you're finding that the numbers are getting that big, there might be a GCF that you can take out. Remember that it's got to come out of all three. So is there a number that all three of these terms are divisible by? Well, yes, there is. It's three. I can divide all these numbers by three, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a three, put it out in front of the entire thing, and I'm going to take it out of each individual piece. So I take a three out of here, I'm left with two z squared. Plus, I take a three out of the 33z, I have 11 z. Plus, take a three out of the 36, I have 12. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that the, this three, it's out in front, so now the numbers are gonna be smaller, but that three needs to stay there for the rest of the problem. Don't lose it, don't lose track of it. However, that does mean that instead of multiplying, finding numbers to multiply to be a uh, positive 216, now we're looking for two numbers that multiply to be a positive 24 whole lot better to work with. We're looking for numbers to multiply to be a positive 24 and add to be middle term positive 11. And so in my signs, if I'm multiplying to be a positive and I'm adding to be a positive, then what signs do I want? I want a positive and a positive. I want them both being positive. And you think through your list of pairs of numbers that multiply to be 24, and my numbers that my ones that add to be 11 would be positive 8 and positive 3. So that's what we're going to use. Oh, don't forget the 3 comes with it. Don't lose it. Two z squared is still the first term. Plus 12 is still the last term. But now instead of my 11x as my middle term, it now becomes a plus 8x and a plus 3x as my middle term. Oh, sorry, plus 8z and plus 3z, not x. I'm so used to using x. So in my first group, we have a 2z squared plus 8z. What number can come out of both of those? It's a 2. And then I have my uh, 
Do I have a Z in both of them? So I can take that out and I'm left with a Z plus eight divided by two is four. I'm gonna write the first sign I see. So plus is the first sign I see here. So plus is the first thing I'm gonna write. What number? Three. And I take that out and I'm left with a Z plus 12 divided by three is four. And so to double check, hang on a second. I lost something. The three, where'd it go? It's gone. Don't lose it. The three still needs to be out in front of the whole thing. Otherwise, if I distribute and multiply this all out, it doesn't wind up back where I started. And then this is the one where it really, really matters because otherwise your final answer is wrong. Make sure you don't lose track of the three. But then, ding, ding, I have Z plus four in both of them. So I can take the Z plus four out of the whole thing. And when I do that, I am left with a two Z here and a plus three in my blue group. So you look for that number that you can take out of the whole thing, don't lose track of it, but then the rest of the process is all the same. Next example, three n squared plus nine n. I'm gonna look for what I can take out of all the terms. What can come out of all the terms? Well, what number can come out of all those terms? The three, is there a variable in both of them? Do we have an n in both of those terms? Yes, we do. So we can take an N out. And when I take a three N out of here, I took the three out of here, so no more uh, number out in front. Take an N out of here, but I still have an N left over. Plus, take an N out of here, no more N, but I have nine divided by three, which is three. And there is not an N squared anymore. I cannot factor that down any further, we're done. If you don't see the n squared or the x squared in your term anymore, then that's it, you're done with the problem. All right, let's start one more. Again, I will not uh, go through this entire problem. Uh, but I want to give you about 30 seconds. Uh, we're working on this one, the 12x squared minus 28x minus 24. Give you 30 seconds. I want you to see if you can pick out what number we would be able to take out of the whole thing. This is the last one we'll do before I hand out the homework. But here, there is a number I could take out of all three of those. What is it? It's four. Four comes out in front. How many got the four comes out in front? Good, good. Four comes out in front of the whole thing. So I divide the 12 by four and I get three X squared. Minus I divide the 28 by four, it's gotta come out of all of them. I divide the 28 by four, I have seven X. Minus I divide the 24 by four and I get six. So now instead of dealing with numbers that multiply to be a negative 288, I have positive three times a negative six. I'd be looking for numbers that multiply to be a negative 18, whole lot easier. And they want we want to add them to be a negative seven. That's my middle term. Uh, I won't go further than that because the rest of the process is the same as what we've been doing. But if you do want to try that, you should wind up with That is your answer. 